Just so we're all on the same page, I'm defining a mech as a legged war machine with controls, pilot interface, and cockpit configuration more similar to a conventional ground or air vehicle. Ergo, if it's a suit you wear, it's power armor, not a mech. If its controls are more analogous to a motion capture setup, it's a mech suit, not a true mech. I realize this may seem like I'm splitting hairs, but I want to iron out these little wrinkles so I can cut down on needless detritus in the comment section. Speaking of which, someone, I forget who, my apologies, asked for my thoughts regarding the game Into the Breach, and after getting the general gist from some YouTube Let's Plays, I've determined that it is not in fact a mech, but a combined arms game, more in the vein of War Thunder than Mech Warrior, because about two-thirds of the vehicles in it I wouldn't actually classify as mechs if presented with in a vacuum, but sci-fi flavored, and in most cases significantly plus-sized, regular combat vehicles like tanks, artillery, and aircraft. The reason I bring this up is because, after some actual consideration, I have come to regard mechs as the land fighter equivalent of a battle cruiser, large and, for lack of a better word, tanky enough to outfight anything it can't outrun, but also being fast, agile, and or stealthy enough to avoid contact with anything it can't outmuscle. My point being that, just like any other machine, mechs are ultimately tools. Tools are meant to serve a function, and as form naturally follows function, in order to understand what a combat mech ought to look like, we first need to derive for it a specific purpose i.e., what do we want our war machine to be able to do? Well, this is going to depend entirely on the nature of armored combat in general on a given future battlefield. Nearly every sci-fi setting essentially treats mechs as either just tanks on legs or as the armored equivalent of a Call of Duty player character, capable of filling any and every role imaginable with equal, if not greater, proficiency as a dedicated specialist. However, I can see one of four possible scenarios each with its own unique set of operational circumstances and problems. Option 1. A mech is a purely utility support platform, a motorized pack mule, not a war horse, whose main mission statement is to go where ordinary ground vehicles cannot, up into confined urban structures, up mountains, through dense jungles and forests, into canyons filled with uneven rocks, etc. Option 2. Ours is a civilian-slash-law-enforcement-slash-urban-defense platform meant for rapid response to unpredictable, high-risk threats such as terrorist incursions, bomb threats, building fires, or other multivarious hazards where the margins for error are simply too minute and or the level of force needed is greater than regular human responders or drones can accommodate. And before anyone mentions the spider or scorpion mechs from Ghost in the Shell, which are robots by my definition, not mechs, I don't know about you, but the very last thing I'd want to see on the street in my neighborhood is a giant mechanical spider with a cannon on top. I don't care who's driving it. Option 3. A mech is a highly specialized, special ordnance platform meant for shock and awe. Basically, just a man in a machine loaded out with as much havoc as can be loaded on and sent out to deprive the enemy of nice things in the words of the fat electrician. Or option 4. Mechs become the primary instrument of asymmetrical warfare, possessing potentially the destructive firepower of entire infantry platoons on a more flexible and stealthy platform than a traditional armored vehicle. In that case, a mech combined with customizable drone packages would become the new battlefield meta. Think Battletech meets Ghost Recon meets Armored Core. Obviously, none of these options are mutually exclusive, just distinct, and it's perfectly possible and I'd argue most likely if they have the faintest whiff of intelligence, that a future military would design a modular omni-machine capable of fulfilling all of the aforementioned roles, plus probably some others I haven't considered, with nothing more than a quick attachment swap. All right, now we have our most essential bases covered. I originally had this and the technical overviews as one solid script, but that other one got too bloated, so, as this part could stand alone, I decided to break it off as a kind of preamble. Don't worry, part two won't be far behind. In fact, I might just hold on to this and release them both simultaneously. We'll see. But anyway, hope you liked it. Subscribe if you did and all that jazz. Make sure to check out my books if you fancy the sorts of things I talk about on this channel. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and stay tactical. Over and out.